you get to the gym, you look around and it's packed and everyone's using the exact equipment that you need. Well, at this point, you've got three options. Option one, go home, forget about the workout, but that's not gonna get you closer to your goals. Option two, wait for the equipment to maybe become available, but who's got time for that? Or number three, adapt. Choose the best exercise alternatives for the ones you need to do and get a great workout. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to adapt when the leg press machine is busy. I'm gonna show you alternatives using free weights, the stability ball, and resistance bands. The first thing you're gonna do is warm up, and that's the best way to assess the situation and figure out how you're going to adapt. So maybe all the cardio machines are busy, but that's okay because you don't need any equipment to do a dynamic warm up. And I'll link to a video in that in case you need some ideas. So while you're doing that warm up though, you can scope the gym and see what areas are crowded, what equipment is being used, and knowing your options, you can adapt your workout accordingly. So some of the things you wanna think about while you're doing that warm up and scoping the gym is what areas are crowded? Are the free weights crowded? Are the machines crowded? Does your gym have resistance bands? Are they long bands? Are they short bands? Does your gym have stability balls? Are those areas also crowded? Does your gym have any space for you to move? For most exercises, you only need enough space for the width of your body. So your warm-up is actually a great multitasking time saver. It's gonna get your body ready, it's gonna help you adapt to your plan, and it's gonna get your mind ready to adjust to that plan and get a great workout. Now, first of all, the leg press is a great exercise. It's just one of those machines that happens to be busy in most gyms, whether they're crowded or not. And sometimes your gym has other leg press machines that you can use, but we're gonna go with the scenario that all of them are busy. So your go-to exercise to swap for the leg press is squats. And we're gonna go through some variations with free weights, resistance bands, and stability balls. But before we dive in, don't think that squats are a second-rate option compared to the leg press. In fact, there's many reasons why squats might actually be better than the leg press for getting you results. And you can learn more about that by watching my squat versus leg press video. So before we jump into the different types of squats you can do, let's go over proper form and some common mistakes that you'll want to avoid. When doing squats, you want to go as low as you can and keep the heels on the ground at all times. You'll drive through the heels, keeping the legs tight and engaging the core to come back to the standing position. Inhale as you go down and exhale as you come up. Now let's go over the free weight versions of squats. So there are barbell squats, dumbbell squats, you can use a landmine for squats, you can use a kettlebell for squats. And as far as variations go, you have the back squat, the front squat, the plie squat, the sumo squat, the one-legged squat, the pistol squat, and I'm sure there's a ton others that I'm forgetting, but that gives you an idea. There's a lot of different choices. Start with a warm-up, go through your full range of motion, make sure your heels are pressing into the floor, Yes, you want to engage the glutes by pressing through the heels, but you're also keeping the entire lower body tight and in control as you lower and as you raise your body. And of course, you keep that core engagement. So let's say you can't get to any of the free weights. Well, if you have resistance bands available, that's a great option. Now there's two types of bands. There's the long bands that usually have the handles, and then there's the shorter bands that we call the loop bands. Now resistance bands actually have a unique advantage that even the leg press doesn't have, and that's that they have a constant tension through your whole range of motion. Bands are gonna give you more resistance on the lifting phase and a little bit less on the lowering phase, but you're still going to be getting that tension. And this also targets the glutes and those stabilizer muscles that that fixed range of motion in the leg press can't match at all. Here's a few tips and common mistakes when it comes to the resistance band. And we're talking about the long one with the handle. We'll get to the short loop band in a second. With the long band, you wanna make sure you're in the center of it. When you stand on it, you wanna make sure that you are well centered between that band. And I know that sounds like common sense, but sometimes we step on it, we're not really paying attention and we realize that one hand is higher than the other. So you wanna make sure you've got nice, even tension. And as with any squat, you want to have proper form. You wanna make sure that your legs are tracking properly, that you're not shifting to one side or the other, that your knees aren't falling in or falling out. You wanna make sure that you are lifting from the chest so that you're not rounding and you wanna keep that core engaged. Another mistake is allowing the band to kind of slack and not have any tension at all, which can happen when you're doing that squat if you have those hands lower than your shoulders. You wanna pull up a little bit with the hands as you're lowering into that squat so that you can keep more tension. And for every squat you do, you want to be in control of the range of motion. Now we just finished going over squats for free weights and the bands, and I wanted to let you know that I have a free cheat sheet. So go ahead and grab that because it's got pictures of all of these exercises 
That way you don't have to worry about remembering everything and you can just take a quick glance at it and adapt your workout. Now the next type of resistance band is the small loop band and your gym may or may not have this, but you know what? They are small enough and light enough to carry with you everywhere. Maybe just in your gym bag. But either way, it's also something you can do at home. So with the looped band, you can place them around the upper thigh, the middle thigh, above the knees. Your placement is gonna vary depending on what's comfortable to you. Now the small loop band also makes a great warm up for any leg workout. It actually helps you to enhance your glute activation. So check out the videos I did on that, on glute activation and booty truths. The small loop bands can be done either stationary or moving. And while I like the moving squat version, if you're in a busy gym, you're probably not gonna be able to do them. So we're gonna focus on the stationary options. So no matter what position that loop is on your thighs, when you're using it to squat, you have to press against it a little bit as you're doing your range of motion. And that's gonna help with glute activation, with your outer thigh strength, and it's going to help you keep your knees tracking properly for a squat. So it re can really help you if you're learning to squat as far as proper form goes, because if your knees cave in, like a lot of people do, the band's gonna fall. So you'll know right away. Using the loop band squat, even as a warm up is gonna help those stabilizer muscles wake up and get ready to do some work. Now here's a few tips to make that small loop band squat even more effective. The first is your tempo. Make sure you pay attention to how fast you're moving because it makes a huge difference on how your muscles are activated. As a matter of fact, yes, I have a tempo training video that I will link to as well. And of course the tension, you wanna to try to keep the same throughout the whole range of motion and that's the key to getting the most out of that exercise. Now moving on to a piece of equipment that oftentimes you have at home, just like the resistance bands, or is just not really used as much in the gym, and that is the stability ball. So the two exercises I'm gonna give you for the stability ball, you don't sit on the ball. So you don't have to worry if the ball is too big or too small. The first one is the wall squat and that's where you have the ball behind you and you push into the wall as you squat up and down. Now, you may not have a wall, so I have a solution for that next, but let's just go over this wall squat real quickly. As you're doing it, you wanna keep your back straight and you still wanna to go to a low range of motion. You won't probably be able to go rock bottom because of the way the ball moves, but that's okay. You're gonna keep a constant tension on your legs. You're gonna push through the heels as you come up and when you're at the top, you're not gonna relax. You're not gonna straighten your legs. You're gonna keep them bent and keep that pressure into the floor so that all of those muscles are activated. So in this type of squat, you have a straighter upper body. So you, of course you're focusing on your core activation, but you also wanna think about your posture and that is your shoulder blades pulled back. You wanna have pressure against the ball that's on the wall, not only to keep it in place, but also to give yourself more resistance. So this exercise is gonna help improve core strength and balance, and that's something the leg press can't do because it removes the need for balance and stabilization. Now, as far as the ball placement on the wall, it's gonna depend on the size of your ball and your body. You wanna have it probably in the middle of your back, but if it's a little higher, a little lower, whatever's gonna be comfortable to you. The main thing is that you have to stay against the ball as you squat down and come back up. And you're gonna use the same proper form that you would for any squat, keeping the core engaged, controlling your muscles on the way down, keeping the heels on the floor and pressing through the heels to activate more of that body on the way up and keeping control of your posture. Now, if your gym doesn't have a wall for you to put the ball against, then the next exercise is gonna be for you. And that's what I call the squeeze and squat. From one of my live classes, here's exactly how to do the squeeze and squat. Stick it right either between your legs or on the edge of your legs whichever one feels most comfortable. Work your feet in until you got a nice squeeze. Your legs are gonna to try to flop out. We gotta keep them squeezed in. So you wanna to try to get that nice and tight, come down into a squat and then squeeze all the way up. So down and up. Now your ankles are probably gonna to try to turn out too. So you have to concentrate on those staying flat. So we have to really think about a lot of things and not just take it for granted. Squeeze the ball real tight when you come up. When you squeeze the ball, inner thigh, hamstring are working, but you're pushing those heels into the floor so you can feel even more. And of course you're exhaling at the top and pulling your stomach in, you know that. So one more time. Your range of motion is gonna vary, probably not gonna be rock bottom, but that's okay. Again, we're doing swaps and it's not necessarily the exercise you're gonna do all the time because you should have a program that has variety anyway, but it's something that when you need it, it's there, you know it, and you can adapt. 
And a couple of tips for this exercise. If you have dumbbells, yes, you can add them. You want to hold the dumbbells by your side. You don't want to place them in front of you. That can affect your lower back. You can change your tempo. Definitely maintain a constant tension and a good slow pace. Now also with the ball squats on either exercise, you want to focus on your knee alignment and making sure that they don't cave in or out. And of course that's true for any type of squat that you do, but sometimes with the balls, it's a little more prominent because there's a lot more stability involved. And so your body's working in different ways. And with all of these exercises, remember to breathe, breathe. Remember to breathe. You wanna exhale on the way up. Your power part of your movement is where you're gonna exhale that air and that's gonna tighten your abdominals and keep that core strong. Your inhale is on the way down. Now remember, there is a cheat sheet you can get for free. The link is down below. That way you can have something that reminds you of the different swaps for these exercises and then all the different varieties that there are. Now I hope this video helped you out and gave you some good swaps for exercises for that leg press or maybe even some exercises that you can swap out in your regular routine. We've only begun to scratch the surface of exercise swaps, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. If there's any specific exercises or pieces of equipment that you have a hard time getting to because they're quite popular, go ahead and put that in the comments below and that way we can get to a video on that as soon as possible.